So um, thank you for coming, everyone. This is Alex Poon. I am one of the co-founder of Charmverse, uh, and I have with me Chris. Hey, what's up, everyone? I see a lot of new faces in the crowd and, and some um, some familiar people here. I see Ting is here, and she's just a really cool project with Charmverse. Yeah, so uh, for those of, before we get started, for those of you who uh, are less familiar with our project, just want to give you a quick uh, overview. Um, so Converse is a Web3 communication platform. Uh, and what you can do with us is that uh, being able to manage members, uh, let the members get to know each other, uh, coordinate tasks, or, or, or uh, really kind of just work together over the platform. Uh, facilitating decisions and then and holding each other accountable. Um, we are very focused on creating a unified experience for community, particularly token community, uh, to work together, leveraging the power of uh, Web3. Um, in short, you can think of us kind of a Web3 Notion or Web3 Google Docs uh, for, for easy comparison, uh, but I think where we shine is the superpower of um, bringing productivity and, uh, and, and the power of blockchain and token together. Um, so today, I uh, want to go through a couple of the bigger features that we have uh, we launched recently and, uh, and share some of the, uh, the awesome stuff that we've been building. Um, so I think as a start, uh, about, I would say about a couple of months ago, um, we launched a proposal builder functionality. Um, basically, if you look at uh, token communities, particularly uh, DAOs that are using uh, the proposal as a as a as a um, governance uh, mechanism, what we have found is that it is pretty difficult to involve the community in the proposal creation process. Um, so what typically happens is that uh, someone goes into a corner uh, or a small team, uh, put together a 20 page proposal, and then uh, just show up and you know, let people know that like, it's time for you to vote. And uh, the only really decision you have is either vote yes or no, um, without a lot of ability for uh, for you to contribute or what, what happened if you agree with 70% uh, of the proposal uh, and, and not the rest and how can you contribute changes uh, to it ahead of time um, without sort of resorting to a pretty messy kind of forum-like experience and just having a free range discussion about it. Um, so the proposal builder allows you to uh, have, have a guided experience on drafting the proposal in using the Chambers platform to collaborate, uh, being able to let people to comment, uh, suggest changes, or even uh, uh, create lightweight polls on the proposal, uh, sort of really increasing the, um, the engagement of the, um, of the proposal. Um, and then it has a, a sort of a review step and then finally kind of getting it to, uh, to, to a vote. Uh, you can vote within Chambers uh, or if you are using Snapshot, you can leverage a native integration with Snapshot and send the proposals for, to Snapshot for voting. Um, but as we have launched the feature, um, besides this is being, besides being used by, again, so traditional DAO for, for, for typical proposal, we also have seen this being used by actually all kinds of creative ways. For example, um, if you are a creator, being able to really engage your audience in um, letting letting your um, your fans uh, participate on different questions you might have. Should we be partnering with this individual versus another? Um, getting getting uh, some suggestion from 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 the fan about um, the various uh, decisions that you want to be making as a creator. Uh, so I think there's a lot of uh, a lot of creativity around this area. Yeah, Chris, I'll just add, add, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll just add that I, um, I I've been using obviously I've been using Converse, but but um, more recently we started using Proposal Builder in uh, in two of my token gated communities, and um, so one which which is called Purple, we just used the proposal feature. I'll just say like um, 
an interesting thing about the way we're using Charm Birth in Purple is that we like to do all of our work in public, um, and but you still need to uh, have a workspace where actual members of the DAO can can collaborate and coordinate. And so we have a token gate where it requires a token to get into the workspace and have rewrite access. Um, but then we set every page public. Um, and so recently we had a proposal, one we passed yesterday actually, and um, we, you know we did it just as you said. I wrote the proposal. I wrote it in private mode for a couple of days. Um, I then moved it into um, into feedback, and then um, I both shared it with the internet at large, and uh, and then shared it with our fellow token holders. And they went in there and they used the suggested edits feature to mostly clean up my copy and suggest better words here and there. And then some people use the comment feature to just comment on the proposal itself. And um, it was pretty quick. Quick. It was pretty seamless. It was um, my my fellow token holder that was their first time using Charmverse. Uh, they found it to be like a really easy experience. They had no real questions. And then we were able to like find consensus on that proposal pretty quickly. And then uh, and then and then it being publicly available, we were able to field some questions from the public via via Twitter or Discord. Um, and um, and then we you know we we put it up to vote and and passed it pretty quickly. Um, so th- so that was a good one. And then. Um, you know, that's out purple. We're using all of the features, and so it's token gated. We're now making heavy use of the documents feature. We just had a really good experience with proposals. In fact, now we have the next proposal queued up in there. Um, and then on, on the and, and we use the member directory, and and uh, something Alex and I, I think we'll talk about in a minute, but there's a member directory, and so now people can sort of put in their, their pertinent information. And then just to contrast that with, um, with Shark Dow, who just started using it for, who just started using Charmverse recently, and like we're sort of, we have a pretty basic uh, sort of wiki homepage on Charmverse, but people are heavily invested in the proposal builder, and so that's that's why they even uh, wanted to use Charmverse to start. And so we've got a very long proposal in there being workshopped by the group, uh, kind of just like we both described. Yeah, and before we talk too much further, um, for those of you who have any questions or comments, um, you should have access. Alex, you just broke up for me, so can you re-say the channel? Oh, it is the general chat. Cool. Well, general. Um, So so with that, uh, I think one of the most recent um, launch a uh, f- feature launch that we, launch we have is the um, is the member directory like Chris was talking about. Um, so as we build our chambers, we talk to quite a few of uh, communities. Uh, some are down, some are really social club, uh, and 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 everything in between. Uh, one common theme that we learn is that. Uh, members within the community really have a hard time getting to know each other. Um, a lot of the projects, you re- all you have access to is really um, the, you know, your PFP or, or an image and then, and then a handle. Um, barely know like, really what each person is and, and, and where they are and what, what did they do, what are they interested in, um, which is, you know, part of the allure of uh, being in crypto, be not necessarily having to use your, your personal identity, but at the same time, it makes building a community difficult. Um, when you can think about like, well, I want to have a in-person get together in Bogota or um, you know, try to figure out who are the designers uh, in, 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 in the community. Um, so, as we learn about this pain point, we spent the last month or so building out a pretty extensive member directory capability to go um, within Chambers. Um, I think there's certainly plenty of um, profile solution in Web3, and actually many we are either working with or looking to work with in the future. Um, what is different about our member directory is that it's very community focused. It is directed against how not not to 
build the next Facebook on Web3, but much more about how can we help uh, each of our members or members within the community to get to know each other and then form more meaningful relationships. Chris, can I uh, push that to you and talk a little bit more about the, what does it actually do? Yeah, yeah, sure. So, um, so certainly everything Alex just said, I, uh, I'll just add that like, uh, it, it sort of solves two problems uh, or, or two challenges. One is, um, and every community is different. So, so you know, just think about these two things. One is totally like, I'm just in a lot of token gated communities and I don't know who the other people are. And so the member directories help solve for that. The other is like in some, I'm in a leadership role and a lot of people want to contribute, but I don't really necessarily even have a good directory of like who can do what and what their skills are. And so it sort of solves for both of those. Um, so everyone who joins your Charmverse workspace um, immediately gets added to the member directory. There's like a, a one screen pop up uh, asking them to fill out some of their information. Everything's super optional. And so we definitely like leave the privacy choice up to the user themselves, what they choose to fill out and choose not to fill out. Um, but pretty typically, you you add your your name or, or your pseudonym, um, a, a profile, um, an avatar essentially. Uh, the we have a couple of links by default: your Twitter link, your Discord link, your LinkedIn link, uh, your GitHub link. Um, the the workspace admins can add sort of an arbitrary uh, amount of information to your your member directory profile. So if they wanted to know your homepage or your OpenSea page or something like that, uh, you can set that up in your workspace. Um, but some of the so other default things is, is we have a bio, we have um, your time zone, which we then show the local time of your other members. And so it'd be really useful if you're like trying to coordinate a call or even just find people to work with in a, in a similar time zone as you. We show their time zone, but then also like what the current time is there. And um, and then there's just like a, a bunch of things we see communities adding. Um, you can add, um, we see communities adding like a skills um, section so people can start to add their skills and say like, I'm, I'm good at product and design and I love art. Um, also your interests. And um, we've seen email addresses. And um, so, you know, sometimes it's just really great to have your members email addresses. There's also like a pretty rich permission systems for the workspace admins. And so when I say workspace admins, like if you started a Charmverse um, instance for your group, you would be the workspace admin and you can add others to, to help admin with you. Um, and then you can can make some, some of these changes specifically here I'm talking about the member directory. Um, and so you may want everyone's email address because sometimes it's useful to just be able to email everyone. Um, you may not necessarily want everyone to see each other's email addresses. And so there's a pretty good permission system that says, like, show this to the admins, but don't show it to anyone else. Or um, show it in the member directory, but don't show it on a user's profile. And uh, so that's another way that we're trying to help workspace admins preserve people's privacy and, and, and sharing sensitive information. Location is another one. So I love to share my location. I live in Miami. I love to meet other crypto people in Miami. I love to meet other crypto people in my communities in Miami. And so... Um, I like to be able to go through the member directory and find out anyone who's nearby. Um, but also lots of people don't want to share their location. And, um, and, and on one level, it's up to the user themselves. They could just not enter their location. Uh, on the other level, maybe you want the, the DAO administration to know your location, but not your fellow members. And so admins can set that up so, so that it works that way. Um, it's pretty robust. I don't know what I may be glossing over. It's a pretty robust feature. You can search the member directory. Um, you can view it in like these beautiful profile cards or just in a kind of a spreadsheet table. Um, yeah, it, it's working pretty well. Excellent. So Chris, if you had to guess like, what, uh, what, the, what are the best type of community that, uh, that would find the uh, member profile helpful? Yeah, I think twofold. I think it's anything that like resembles um, <laughs> this is just, this is kind of a it's not a guess, it's like based on seeing people use it and being in the thing. But I do think like it's obviously very flexible and, and, and a member director is kind of broadly applicable. But to the use cases I'm, I'm most excited about or anything that's a, a social DAO. So, um, you know, so, or, or social, social community where the point is to meet up, whether you meet up on Zoom or you meet up in real life or you meet up when you're at Eat Denver. Um, that's kind of 
one really good use case of the member directory. I think the other one, which is maybe more broadly applicable, is like anyone who's trying to do work together, um, whether that work is like to create memes or or even more intense work, having a member directory to like find that like who are all the designers and who's interested in participating in the DAO or uh, you know who has marketing experience. Um, the, those tend to be like two really strong use cases for me. Um, it's basically builders and and social DAOs. Very right, cool. But there's so many um, DAOs. It's like you know, if you were an impact DAO, you would want the same thing because you'd want to see the other members. If you were DSI, you'd want to do the same thing. If you were an investor DAO, you may very, very much meet your fellow DAO members. Uh, maybe an investor DAO is maybe another really exciting use case because um, you know you're all in the same business. Uh, you're sharing leads inside the DAO and outside the DAO, um, but you may not even know who's in the Discord with you. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like our, our you know, it, it's, again for those of you who are less familiar with Chambers, that uh, we are, um, you know, this is something you can currently uh, currently start using. Uh, the Chambers uh, instance today is um, is free to use until. Uh, until sort of June of next year. So uh, if you're building a community, we very, we're very excited uh, for you to check out what we, what we can offer and uh, in, in both helping you manage your membership and really allow the, the community to uh, work together or organize um, you know, toward a, a, a singular goal. Um, yeah, I would just also add, I'll just, just add for everyone who's new here is that um, we love feedback. Anyone who's been here for a while knows we're super responsive to feedback. Um, we've added features maybe for the last four or five weeks now in a row that were suggested by users that we um, we added them in that same week. Uh, we just did that today even. Um, so use the product support channel if you're having trouble. There's a new features idea channel if you've got ideas for us. And um, yeah, we're just... We're just very collaborative with the community that we're building here. So, Chris, let's let's highlight uh, maybe two or three features that uh, that's that's coming out uh, in the let's call it before before Christmas uh, of this year. Okay, cool. We got we got a lot coming out before Christmas. Um, I'll start off by uh, I'll go I'll go one and then you go one. Uh, yeah, and um, I'll start off with. Um, I guess the one I was, I was working on today, so, so I'll go there, which is we want to add a discussion feature to Charmverse, like a discussion forum. Um, we do know that like a lot of communities are, are, are spread across the internet in their communications. And so it's like you're doing real-time chat in Discord, and then your votes are up on Snapchat, and then your asynchronous communication can be on other tools like Discourse. And um, so we are actively working on bringing on kind of a, a discussion forum into Charmverse so that you can asynchronously work with your community members, um, even use it as a, as a water cooler, share memes, um, but then also as a place to do serious work and, and have announcements. We're like much more inspired by Reddit, I would say, than um, sort of your average forum. And so I think there'll be a little bit of a, a feed kind of format and really thready conversations and upvotes and downvotes. And um, just another way to like, yeah, just that, like have a central location where all of your communication can happen and uh, and it can happen asynchronously. Yeah, and as, as Chris mentioned that like we are literally in the middle of designing this feature. So for those of you who who are actively currently using some kind of forum and is thinking about Chambers, uh, please, please, please uh, let us know what you like about forum, what you wish, the, some of the current forum uh, capabilities uh, you know, could could deliver. Uh, we we would love to um, sort of build the best forum experience uh, for for our Web three community. Absolutely, and if you're not using a forum, it probably means all of your communication is happening in a tool like Discord, um, which is great for lots of things. Um, you know, obviously we're here in Discord. We run a whole com company in, in Discord, um, but it can be super challenging to stay on top of all of the conversations. And then especially like the really important ones. And so, you know, proposal builder was a step in that direction, which was like, it's when everyone's talking about the proposal in Discord, it means you have to be in Discord 24 hours a day to, to see the conversation. Uh, but as soon as you move that proposal conversation over to Termverse, you now can like, you know, after work at night, 
be involved in the proposals. Um, and so it's sort of a, one of the goals of this kind of discussion forum is similar, which is, you know, again, we're not going to replace Discord uh, for people who use it, but, um, but to, to bring some of that conversation out into asynchronous and more thoughtful writing is, uh, is one of our goals. Cool. Well, let me, uh, I'll go on the next one. Um, so as uh, some of the communities start to like, move into, into Chanverse and start to like leverage the various capabilities from, again, member directory to proposal to uh, just really managing tasks and, and, and documents, um, it really becomes sort of their home base or their, 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 their town hall. Um, so one of the, one of the uh, big requests that we have for all kinds of usage it's it's uh, it's a need of a set of API uh, for those of you who are more technically uh, inclined. Um, so there, there's really different kinds of usage from being able to uh, connect to a bounty system uh, so that it can tie to uh, perhaps a, a Telegram Telegram bot or a Discord bot or that that's of a separate sort of gamification system and and so on um, and. We have gotten a lot of very interesting requests uh, around APIs. Um, so you will see us coming out with uh, a set of robust APIs around really using Converse as your, um, your productivity in Web3 backend in, in a way, uh, but then be able to connect to different pieces and for you to build on top of or build adjacent with um, for, for, for your specific community use. Uh, particularly if you're building a large project on Traverse, definitely let us know, and we would would love to consider your your request for like what exactly the API can look like, what type of information that you want to pull from it. Um, yeah, we are also actively designing on this on this area, so um, please reach out, and uh, we would would love to uh, build together with you. Yeah, I am. Um... It, it, just, it, it really is just that. We know kind of the high-level things that people want out of the API, but we would love some of the details. Like some of the details that we've heard are, um, you know, Traverse has its own version of databases, and you might want that data to come from a type form, right? You might want to have people create a survey and make sure that that survey data wants to be in your Traverse space. Or you have um, banking software, and you want to make sure that the, um, the transaction data makes it into... Um, a database in, into Traverse, and so that's like one of the very specific requests we've uh, we've received recently, which is like we want to be able to read data and write data into Traverse databases. Yeah, cool. I'll go next here. Um, we are halfway through sort of um, building a, a real time infrastructure for Traverse, and so a few months ago, or even weeks ago at this point, everything was like very um, asynchronous and require page reloads. And if uh, I made changes to content, you might not see it right away. And so we've done a, a first version of, of real-time collaboration um, where you can see it if you're using a Kanban board, you can see um, people moving cards around the board. Um, and, and actually most of the spots in our app right now, um, you see some real-time collaboration. If someone creates a new file, you see there's a new file created. If they change the order of... Um, of your kind of directory structure, you see all of that. Uh, but what's going to come online soon is real-time editing in the documents. And so while I'm super inspired by this, I'm, uh, you know, I use Figma all day long. Uh, we're all part of custom to Google Docs. Uh, I'm actually like very genuinely uh, excited to be in documents with, with Alex and the team and, and um, you know, on calls together and editing documents and seeing it updating uh, all in real time. Um, we also believe at the same time that like this is table states. This is like what modern modern software does. And so um, on one hand, I'm like super excited to have this real time infrastructure and, and real time collaboration. And on the other hand, it just feels like something we need to have. Uh, and so you know we'll be coming out with that pretty soon. And then yeah, I think it will just be a lot more collaborative and, and make it more fun. And then you know turn these token communities into a massive multiplayer <laughs> online game to some extent. Uh, where you can like really be in there with documents uh, in real time with people. Yeah, I'm very excited about that. Um, it's definitely as uh, us using it uh, all day long. Uh, that's a feature that, uh, at least internally, one of the most requested, uh, most valued feature. 
Um, but let me share like one more uh, things that are coming down the pipe. Um, and this is the, uh, I said the templating system. Um, so again, Charmverse is such a sort of productivity Legos uh, or, or Web3 Legos, if you may, uh, that you can really build a lot of different uh, capability out of it. Um, but we certainly want to make it easy for various community to do their specific work. And sometimes it's just a little bit more difficult to look at a blank page and say, you know what, what should I put in here when there's so many options of things? Um, and so for those of you who are really just looking to solve a problem, build a community particular for you, uh, could be being because you're a brand or a creator or you are an impact DAO or a, a D-side DAO. Um, sorry. I uh, laptop just froze for a second. Um, so based on Chris, I'm still talking, right? You can hear me. Yeah, yeah, got you. Oh, okay. Um, so for um, for the various personas and, and different use cases, uh, we are going to be coming out with a template system so that uh, both uh, you can create various templates uh, within Chamverse, but we will also be providing. Uh, sort of like workspace Y template so that like if you are creating a, a brand on Chamverse, this is sort of the basic pages and this is a, sort of the different capability that you want to be using, uh, giving you more examples, um, really, really kind of making it easier to use and easy, easier to figure out like exactly what are all the cool things that you can uh, do with Chamverse without a lot of uh, learning curve. Yeah, absolutely. And then and then tucked in there, I know we're really excited about some of the creator use case. So we want to have a creator template. Uh, and creators mean a lot of things. But we, what we've seen pretty recently is um, more NFT projects starting to spin up a Charmverse page uh, or space. Um, you can sort of engage with your NFT holders that way and your community. You can have them vote on upcoming art artworks or or you know maybe free mints or new drops and um and obviously it's all very token gated so you need to be holding the nft and uh, i'm pretty inspired uh, I, i'm an nft collector myself so i'm pretty inspired to see that use case and um and we want to do everything we can to sort of help creators um again not just nft uh creators which, which is totally you know one, one category of creator that we're interested in uh, but just creators at large maybe you're a musician and you've offered social tokens, and how do you get, um, how do you add value to people who are holding NFT or your social tokens and having a, a token gated workspace where you can share media and, and proposals and maybe you can use the bounty system um, can, can be really fun and really cool. Yeah, so we've got a, a lot of things happening on our end, certainly keeping us busy. Um, at this moment, we'd love to hear if there's any questions from the audience. Uh, you, again, you can type it in the general chat uh, area, or you can, I think you can raise hand, and then we can, uh, you can ask the, any questions live as well. Yeah, I'd be interested in hearing even, even what, what kinds of communities people are in. Um, one thing that can sometimes happen is you can like just permissionlessly start a Charmverse space. And so uh, maybe you're in an NFT community and you think Charmverse might be a cool tool for you. Um, you can like just start the Charmverse space. You can actually, you know, set the token gate and, and you know, kind of be the champion for that community. Uh, something, just think the permissionlessness of Web3 is just so great. And so uh, seeing people create Community run Trumverse spaces, maybe separate from the the project creator, is uh, is definitely a thing that can happen. Um, and it's super flexible. So whatever your Web three interest is, you can kind of uh, gather your friends into Trumverse. Yeah, and actually, one quick example for that is that we had a uh, we were heading out to AmCon, uh, one of the one of the the DAO conferences, and uh, we, it, it it needed a a basic space to host all the side events. Um, so yeah, we end up creating a, a chamber space that has really nothing except a table of uh, all the side events that were uh, in M M MCON, uh, but it's simply gated by the uh, MCON NFT contract. 
so that uh, you know again totally permissionless, but I was able to have a space where people can 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 gather and then have a have a spot where uh, only the members of of the uh, of that particular conference is uh, have be able to access that that space. Uh, it took us ten minutes to do, so super easy to to stand up these uh, sort of temporary structure uh, when you need them. Yeah, it's super. It's like like you said, these are like. Lego. These are like Web three Legos, and uh, you can be super creative. And uh, in fact, um, she's here, but but there's a, a user named Tin created um, like the Web three emoji guides. So lots of companies in Web three have emojis that represent them, and she's the Trumpers page. Uh, she, she created the guide, made it, shared it to make it public, and uh, and shared it across the internet. And I know we really loved it, and it was like a very creative use of of Trumpers. Alex, while while we have like maybe you can talk about uh, also a recent hackathon use case we saw. Yeah, definitely. So again, uh, being able to leverage all these different pieces. Um, so if you are running a hackathon, like you can absolutely stand up a Chamber's workspace uh, to help out your uh, your fellow hackers, right? It's going from you know simply having a singular spot to have all the instructions. Um, you know, location of the venue, uh, the, the the prizes, and so on and so forth, just all set up in one place. Um, but then one of the even more important pieces is about like be leveraging the member directory so that the hackers can can find each, each other. Um, particularly if you start utilizing things like having custom properties uh, for, you know, what are your interests? Uh, and now maybe like even letting people like create pages um, to highlight their ideas really facilitate that um, that asynchronous team building uh, as people trying to find each other and create create groups um, and then once we do that um, of course letting the team them, themselves collaborate uh, using Chanverse, you can manage uh, sort of your hackathon tasks you know who's going to be doing the designing work who is doing the back end who is actually going to be filming the the final uh, demo videos uh, managing kind of that day to day, well, that like you know whatever forty eight hours or or, uh, or three days of work uh, within uh, with, within the page, um, and then be able to move move all that uh, all that project to to voting uh, also within Chambers. So then uh, you can put up all the projects, and then the having just the judges having um, the right NFTs which tie to the judges' role. And then letting them vote, um, and it'll be like voting in the open. Uh, everybody can see who voted for which project, and then the result is kind of quickly apparent, um, you know, with, within the space. Um, and then finally, uh, even though we, we know that like most hackathons prefer to uh, sort of pay their prices after the fact, um, but if you want to, you can also leverage the Chamverse. Um, bounty system to pretty much put the uh, put the prices or put the the winners as uh, a bounty and then uh, pay them through uh, either Nosa Safe, uh, which we have direct integration for, or through your regular wallet. So that's a I found to be a kind of creative way to again for a singular event uh, use the Chamverse workspace, and I think you will see um, more hackathons starting to uh, use Chamverse to do exactly that in the future. Yeah, awesome. And I would just encourage everyone um, in, in two ways to communicate. If, you, if you're trying to do something creative with Charmverse, um, if you're starting a hackathon, if you have a, a new idea that you haven't heard here, um, and you reach out to us, we, we would love to provide support to you. Um, so we're around. If you start a few days early, we can um, you know, help you get it all set up. And then likewise, when you're done, uh, or if you just do it, with, if you don't need our help, uh, let us know what you did, and uh, especially if it's something you shared public. We would love to amplify that and share it um, in our network as well. And also it inspires us to think about what kind of features we should be creating for, for the community. Cool. Well, last call for questions. Okay. Um, Sandra, I know we're, we're doing a, a raffle, right? Um, you want to jump, 
you gonna you wanna jump back on and talk a little bit about logistics? Yeah, hi everyone. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Xandra, the community manager. We do have five codes for um, people to set up their personal Link3 um, account. So after this space, those codes will be sent out. So really, you just need to wait, but they should be coming out in a pretty reasonable amount of time. So um, yeah, that's about all. This is the first time we've done the raffle. So excited to get those codes out to five lucky people. Um, so I believe this space is scheduled to go for an hour, so it probably won't happen until after that. But we will have five codes going out to five lucky people. Awesome. Well, on that, thank you for listening to us. Really excited to collaborate with you. Um, again, we are here to help. If you're leveraging Chamverse or if you're building something interesting, uh, we'd love to amplify your project uh, as you move forward. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, thanks, Alex. And, and just for everyone, we do these pretty regularly, uh, try to give product updates. You can ask questions for our next AMA uh, when you see it. All right, take care. Thanks. All right, bye-bye.